Sir Court and Bass, which is their other alternative, Koopa will have a lot more options. Yeah. All right, we're going to go ahead and get this first match started here. Yep, just some uh, really long strokes at the baseline just to build up some meter between the two of these players here. Oh, and the first drop shot there. So unfortunate. That's so easy to do, though. It's all muscle memory at this point for these players. And so when you see a ball coming the other direction that you're not able to reach, it's just so easy to like input a trick shot, even when you know it's a drop shot and it's not going to reach. Slice comes in. Now Jake trying to push a little bit of advantage, gets thrown back Ooh. by the lob, though. Yeah, Fitz trying to pull up the aggression. Wow, first red, that lob, able to get that star shot, and another drop. But Jake's barely going to be able to make it. The lunge comes in. Ooh. Oh, and the fly. Jake decides to go for it, though. And we got a lot of progression coming from Fitz. Decides to finally go back, just barely catch that ball. Now we're back in uh, neutral position. Yeah, so Jake is completely out of energy. So one thing that happens quite a bit in this game is something called a meter snowball. Um, once you get up a lot of meter, it's really hard to gain meter if the other player knows what they're doing. And this is what we're seeing here. It's called a meter snowball. Oh, has to go back. Jake gonna give that point, of course. The shy guy, go, oh, like we said, too slow to be able to make it back. Perfect, Jake. Shy Guy is what you might call a glass cannon character. He has very little defense. And so as you see, it's really hard for him to move around and get these balls. Ooh, got lucky that that one actually reached. Yep. All goes on the same side. Fitz was a little bit unsure, so decided to use up that zone speed just to be able to make it back. Oh, oh. there was a charge lob. So there's different behaviors between the different lobs. A charge lob will go straight back like that. If it has no charge on it, it's something called a weak lob, and you're able to gain meter on it. So unfortunately, Fitz just misread which type of lob it was. See a lot of trick shotting back and forth here. Oh, unfortunate. So that was something called an option select, which is actually a very technical input. You input the front trick and then both side tricks, and you have to do it within a couple of frames. But if you do so, you can actually cancel the front trick with the side tricks. As you saw there, he was unable to cancel the front trick, and so the front trick came out and not the side tricks. Oh, went way close to the net, goes for an immediate lob. Yeah, using that zone speed just to make sure it doesn't get steamrolled there. Jake sacrificed a lot of meter to get on the aggression, but going to bring it back with those charge shots. Still in a good position to keep things going here. Definitely. Fifth playing really well. He wants another shot at the Japanese oh. players, man. That's going to be out, though. Sometimes so when you get a bad enough lunge, then the angle's not going to quite get, make it there. And Definitely. then you get like a out or a net sometimes. The interesting thing about both these characters is that the reach is very small. So actually seeing them lunge as, as infrequently as they do is just a testament to how good of players they are. Yeah. There's, there's kind of a meme in the, in the tennis community that the net always does not favor Jake. But that time, he was able to get a nice charge out of it because the slice hit the net right there. And as far as we know, the net is basically RNG. Yeah, pretty much. Ooh. Another option select. Unfortunately, doesn't gain any meter that time. Yeah, reacted correctly with the slice, though. Doesn't get that pushback. Jake thought that maybe with the double tap might have been able to secure oh. something. So unfortunate. He's just gonna let that one go, yeah. Because in order to get that one, he would have had to burn most of his meter that he had accumulated, and so he just felt like it wasn't worth it. Yeah. Goes in for a trick shot. Especially when it's tied up 4-4 like this. Is, do we have to move it on our end, or the darkness of the screen? Ooh, very nice counter. Oh, unfortunately, he just dead spotted his uh, trick shot, and so... Fitz goes up, or sorry, we're now watching it from Jake's perspective. Uh, Jake goes up, now we're watching it from Fitz's perspective, and now it's from Jake's. So Jake goes up 5-4. Sorry about the confusion there. There we go. Uh, side by side now. Uh -oh. Right now. All right, he's on super low meter. He yeah. has to get oh, every read correctly. All up on the zone speed. Able to barely get it, though, on that lunge. Just barely. Ooh. Another hard read. Oh, kind of wow. Meter, but yeah, the option trick. select was perfect there. Another option select. Oh, oh yeah. Didn't quite get the right read there. Now Jake's going to go up 6-4 here. 
I think one thing that's super challenging with low meter is exactly where to position your character. You want to be at baseline, but at the same time, it's really just tempting to be super aggressive. And so we just saw, uh, oh, so unfortunate. The trick shot just didn't quite reach there. Yeah. So Jake goes up one game to nothing. Mm -hmm. Fitz was up 4-0 on Jake at that moment, and then all of a sudden Jake grounded it back with a basically reverse bagel, not letting Fitz get any other points in that set. Definitely. That's one of the things about meter being so important in this game. If you're able to get someone at low meter, you can really snowball one direction or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is top four. Top four. <laughs> All right, it looks like we're going Shy Guy Koopa again, and we're been counterpicked tonight. Yeah. So Night Court's an even faster court, which means that Shy Guy's going to have a lot of challenges here. Koopa really does well on night because his movement speed is so fast, and he also has a bunch of new options. In addition to his drop shot, which just still works on night, he also has a nice top spin. Oh, an unfortunate read. Yeah. Doesn't have any meter to work with it, though. You, you kind of have to go for those reads on the perfect trick shots to be able to try and bring back your meter game. Definitely. It didn't quite work out there, though. Yeah. Oh, too much distance. Went too far to the right. Thought that for sure the ball was going to go there on that shy guy angle, but... Definitely. It's a very natural thing to cover the cross-board angle, but it's really hard to cover both with low meter. Yeah. So he's doing a very good job of all these reads so far. All right. Trick shot. Uh, oh, unfortunate. Okay. The option selected didn't quite reach. He didn't have enough range on his side trick for the option connect. The option uh, select to right. reach the side trick. Another nice option select. All right, and they're back up to a meter parity, which is really nice. Oh, going aggressive Ooh. on the court. Jake just knew immediately the cross court was coming out, and the lob comes in. That's, That's a charge lob. Yeah, he has to go back to meter. All right, was able to gain a uh, perfect trick shot on that. Oh, Fitz used up all that meter to try and maintain the aggression, but Koopa, very fast, gonna be able to bring it back. Wow. And the gym That's tech huge. right there, yeah. Fitz is playing very aggressively on low meter, so this is a very dangerous game. Hopefully it works out for him. So far, no lunges. Oh, there's the first one. Trying to go in there. Oh yeah, there's uh, too much distance, able to get the aggression, and not enough speed, and no meter to work with either. Definitely. One of the nice things you saw him pull out there, if you're watching very closely, was a single tap slice. Single tap slices are, are really, really nice shots because they move very slowly, allowing you to reposition. See, there was a, another slice there that moved slowly and allowed him to position. Although it wasn't enough because he didn't have enough meter. Going 5-1 this time around, looking a lot better. Uh, than the first game, oh, but that's, yeah, that's the it. nature of Jake, just to be able to adapt and uh, recalculate his play to be able to get really nice uh, point scales like this. Definitely. It's going to be an uphill battle at this point for Fitz. Yeah. Oh, oh that's going to be out. He's going to save it? Yeah, that's going to be it. Okay, Jake takes it 2-0. It's still a really great job to both of these players. Is this best of five or is this a... Uh, uh, it three? should be best of three as far as I know. I think they're just talking it out. Okay, I got you. But yeah, congratulations, Jake, for advancing to Losers Finals, right? Yep, Losers Finals. Yeah. Yeah, moving on into top three. So we're going to have another shot at uh, whoever of the two Japanese players uh, falls into the Losers bracket. So we're going to be moving on and... Uh, Oh, yeah, congratulations ahead. Fitz for number four. That's really, really impressive. This has been a very strong tournament, so being able to pull out a fourth place uh, position is really impressive. Yeah. I'll go ahead and uh, make sure they're okay. Yeah, they're Yeah, they're they're moving All right. on up. Yeah. Alright, that's <laughs> the the Japanese invaders uh winners finals today. So I mean it, yeah. team kill has to happen eventually and it, it, the best place to have it happen is basically when the seed allows it, so No definitely. Atsushi and Zeno are both incredible players, so it's a testament to how good the Japanese scene is that they were able to beat all of our MTAC players and all the other players who came out today. Yeah. There we go. So while they take things uh, situated, I mean, these two can at least communicate with each other, so we don't need a translator this time around. Uh, Definitely. Atsushi speaks a little bit of English, so it actually was able to work out how to work out all the bands and stuff like that. 
For sure. Yeah, so we'll just wait on these guys uh, to get things started. Of course, if you are new to watching Mario Tennis Aces and you're interested in joining the competitive community, try and check out the, the MTAC Discord. Uh, I'm sure some people in the chats will uh, plug it in and be able to share those, uh, share those links. And uh, you guys can join the community and figure out uh, how Aces works for you. Yeah, for sure. It's an amazing community. We have a lot of talented players. And they're really willing to give like individual instruction or just like help out whenever you need a hand. And there's a lot of like it's actually very active. So would highly recommend checking it out when you have an opportunity. Yep. And of course, Atsushi and Zeno. Like we said before, Atsushi mains the Rosalina Luma uh, combo, mm -hmm. and uh, Zeno uh, mains pretty much anyone in the game. But he's been going Luigi for the most part. Basically, uh, from what I've understood, a mid-tier character in this game. Doesn't do well against anyone above him, but does better than everyone below him. So just a perfect gatekeeper type of character. Definitely, but something to note in this 2.2.0 patch is that one of Luigi's biggest weaknesses, which is why he was mid-tier, was his pivot, which is him moving side to side and him like turning around. Um, it's been nerfed dramatic, or it's been buffed dramatically. So he's able to move around like any other character. And so that's really given Luigi all the strengths of like having a really long range and really good slice game, really good slice volley, and none of the weaknesses of the weird pivot. Right. Yep, they both uh, plug in the headphones into the into the switches just to get their audio. Oh, okay. Atsushi going to boo this time around. Mm. I have never seen this before, so this is going to be interesting to see. So I was watching their friendlies last night, 